love. Some would say it took a backseat when the pandemic forced us apart. As a family-run and proudly Canadian-owned company, Charm Diamond Centres saw the need to bring us together with tales of love and created the Canadian Love Map podcast. Since then, we've shared hundreds of real, uplifting stories that prove love conquers all. So thank you for listening. We couldn't do it without you. And remember, love starts here. At some point along the way, between the age of 5 to 15, they're being a part of things that are making them feel like they're not worthy because of their body or the way they look or the things that they're going through. And that's, that's what the world is doing. So what happens between 5 and 15? Hi, I'm Nancy Regan. We've got a good one for you today. This week's love story belongs to Alicia and Scott, a couple who won the hearts of millions by inviting them into their daily lives through their addictive social media presence. With Alicia leading the charge, their content brings joy and laughter to many, and her messages of self-love, body positivity, and giving back inspire millions of fans every day. Alicia loves to surprise others, but in this episode, we've got a surprise for her. Okay, is everybody breathing? Yeah. <laughs> this, I, that's, you know, that's where I like to start. <laughs> Let's start with a, a deep breath. That's this for Scott, Alicia, you know that. Yeah. Okay, this is extraordinary for us because we're usually just in a recording booth. So thank you so much for joining us for this. Thank you for having thank you. us. I was driving here and I was thinking um, of this little tune, Alicia and Scott up in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. <laughs> First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes 1.4 million followers. <laughs> Pretty much. How did this happen? <laughs> I don't know. Your guess is as good as ours, honestly. I, uh, I lost my job two years ago and... I spent a year just kind of doing my thing. And then I got a part-time job and I found TikTok. And I had been scrolling on TikTok like the, the majority of adults do without an actual account, just kind of, you know, peeking on what everybody else was doing. And then one day there was a trend. Um, and the trend was my boyfriend's 10 times hotter than me check. <laughs> so I was like, this is a great opportunity to exploit my husband. So <laughs> I, I created this trend, which was essentially pictures of how attractive he is and me in the forefront. And I knew that that would grab some attention because I am plus size. He is physically fit. It's been a topic of our relationship for the majority of it. So I posted it and I remember texting him and sending it to him and being like, this is going to go <laughs> viral and he was like no it's not like it's not and then all of a sudden I'm at work and my sister's texting me being like there's there's like 200,000 views on this and then 35 minutes later she was like there's 400,000 views on this and it just started escalating and escalating and escalating and he was like oh okay <laughs> so it just kind of evolved until there was two million views on it and I we woke up the next day and I think I had 56,000 followers overnight. This is my second TikTok I had ever posted. And I was like, oh, no, no. <laughs> now I have to be funny. <laughs> like now, <laughs> now people are here to like watch me or or not. I don't know. Like I don't know how this works. So we just started creating. We, we kind of picked a direction for it and started making videos with it, with obviously keeping our relationship the, the forefront of it, um, but sliding in the things that I enjoy, like humor and body positivity and self-love and just kind of added it in. And le actually, what's today? The 20, today the 22nd or the 21st? <laughs> um, my one year anniversary on TikTok is the 22nd of November. So... So in a year, 1.4 million in a year, which is outrageous, but yeah. Outrageous is right. Scott, when you woke up that next morning next to her and discovered this, did you have a vulnerability hangover? Not really. I mean, so a lot of people have viral videos and then that's it, but I didn't know, <laughs> it, was, I didn't know it was gonna keep going on. And then she had a few that actually really took off, so. You just happened to be the forefront of the first one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I love that your love story is at the forefront. And I want to go back to the beginning. This is a podcast about love. So tell me how that story happened. 
Uh, so flashback to 2006, we started high school. Um, I happened to be in math class with his best friend, who I admittedly at the time had a crush on. <laughs> so, um, and he, his best friend ended up giving me his email, which I think was like his nice way of like letting me down. Was like, <laughs> I'm not interested, but here's my friend's <laughs> email. So he didn't tell me. <laughs> just gave it to her. So I went home that day, and that was back in the days of MSN. Like, uh, it, so I say that now, and there are like kids online that are like MSN, and I'm like, oh gosh, <laughs> that was a big thing. So I added him to MSN, and we spoke before we had ever spoken in person for probably months just talking on like online essentially to one another I'd get home from school I'd sign on and we'd we'd talk um and then it just kind of went from there we were friends for about probably a year um and then one night we were watching video awards right and uh we kissed so we were like 17 16 at this point 17 17 um which was Scott's first kiss. Um, <laughs> and um, afterwards, we we didn't talk for like what, what felt like two weeks. I over-exaggerate that because I was a teenager and it was a long time. Uh, and then one day, like he messaged me on MSN and we just kind of decided from then on there that we were going to date and see where it went. And little did he know, <laughs> 14 years later, we would be married and here, so... So you basically invented online dating. <laughs> Pretty much. <Yeah. laughs> right. Essentially, yeah, the, the OG online dating. We'd spend all day at school and then want to get no. home, I'd talk we'd, to her. We'd walk past each other in the hallways, <laughs> not say a single word, and then we'd get home and be like, how was your day? <laughs> okay, so you are going out, you're in high school, you graduate, and then what? I moved in to his parents' house. Yeah. I was pretty much not like it, it just again, naturally just kind of I was spending so much time there that I was like, I guess I live here now. Um, and I went like I start I did a f- few years of university. We were living there. We moved out when we were 20. I think it was we got our first we I shared think- an we shared an apartment like we we've our very first apartment by ourselves was only five years ago yeah yeah it was only five years ago we've had roommates for the majority of our relationship and we've we've essentially just grown up together which has been the cool like the coolest part we've kind of gone through the hard parts of our life and I think that that you're learning who you are on top of trying to develop a relationship and then all of a sudden we were nine years deep and we just that was it we we knew that we were going to be together forever and so how did that next step happen? <laughs> the, the, the uh, engagement slash wedding slash. Yeah. Nine week period. Um, people always <clears throat> ask, people always ask us this question, like, how did you get engaged? We definitely we didn't do the traditional engagement. Um, we were laying in bed on a, a random Sunday and this was our first apartment that we had ever had together, just the two of us. And I rolled over like typical nagging <laughs> girlfriend. And I was like, are you ever going to get me a ring? Um, and he was like, um, do you want a ring or do you want to get married? And I'm not stupid. I was like, I want to get married. So <laughs> while we were laying in bed, oh, I called my mom and I was like, we're going to get married. And my mom's like, okay. Cause everybody, we had been together at this point for nine years. Everybody just knew eventually that that was going to happen. And mom put my father on the phone and I was like, so we want to get married in the backyard. He was like, okay, click. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And a couple of days after we show up at the house and there was a giant, giant pile of rock sitting in the front yard because my dad had like immediately hung up the phone with us and called somebody to help him redo the entire backyard so that we could we could go there and get married. So everybody was pretty much on board. And that's what we did. I found a dress. We planned the simplest, easiest wedding that we could possibly plan. And we had a giant party and got married. That's awesome. I I think of weddings as a great example of the difference between showing off and showing up. And, you know, a lot of people, for, for many people who get married, the wedding is a performance art, 
of sorts. Yeah, exactly. And it's so much about the what's going on and the glitter rather than the whatever kind of sacred bond that's created and being honored between the two people. Yeah. And what I'm hearing you say is that your wedding was all about showing up. Exactly. A hundred percent. What do you remember of that day, Scott? Uh, I was very nervous. <laughs> it's typical for me. Um, but I didn't stress too much about anything. It was a really low-key day. Um, I obviously let her take the reins on the whole day. She could do whatever she wanted, and uh, we wouldn't change a thing. We wrote each other letters. That was... Except I still have mine. You can't find yours. <laughs> <laughs> Fair dig, babe. Fair dig. That is an um, epic fail. That yeah, is, I know. <laughs> Some, I'm everything. I know. It's got to be somewhere. But we wrote each other letters, and that was the that was probably the highlight of my day because it was really cool. I we were not together. We didn't stay together the night before. I don't know to like add excitement, I guess. And then the next day, I, we were dressed up and we I don't think we read our letters at the same time but we had both written one for one another and it was like the coolest thing because when you've grown up with somebody and you're obviously you're excited for that day but reading the letter our letters were the exact same and that was so <laughs> cool like they were they were for like verbatim from the top <laughs> to the end talking about things that like just like how our relationships have gone and we have an, an inside, I guess it's not really an inside joke, but we call things that we do together first. So pretty typical, but like if we're doing something we've never done together, we'll remind each other, this is the first, like this is the first time we've done this together. And, uh, it, the whole, both of our letters pretty much just talked about our first and how excited we were and like it ended almost the exact same. So that was really cool because if if you were having any doubts, which we weren't, but <laughs> if we if you were having any doubts that moment, like reading that letter from him was like, OK, like we're on literally on the same page. Like we were he drew little pictures on <laughs> on his and like it was just it was a good and we had started writing each other notes when we were 16. So to kind of like go on to our big day, like we reading a note from each other was pretty cool. Okay, yeah. so I want you to create um, a picture for me. Was there an aisle that you walked up? Yes. Yeah, the side of your house. Yeah, so not a traditional aisle. So we, like, my, um, we were inside the house and we got married in the backyard off my parents' back deck. And I walked, we walked out the front door and around the side of the house, which is where dad put all the nice like rock all the way up and had it all lit up with lights. So we walked up and then walked to the front of the deck, which was where Scott was standing. So people could see me when I came around the corner, essentially to walk up. So it was a little less nerve wracking. So, Oh, for you. Yes. But what about Scott? Who I presume you were standing there waiting <laughs> yeah. in front of the crowd. Uh, yeah. How did, what were you thinking in that moment? Um, I honestly wasn't nervous. No, we had also we had also had a few drinks before that. Yeah, moment, we did. Before <laughs> that, <laughs> moment but, yeah. um, we were all together in the house moments before we walked down the aisle, and his best friend, who was the one who I had a crush on, to come full circle here, st is was stood in the wedding for us, and he they did a little huddle while I was in the <laughs> middle of the living room. You were there. I was standing right there. They did a little huddle, and he was like, "Okay, Scott, you have two choices. I've got a tr a truck out front for you, ready to go. We can head out, <laughs> or you can go and get married." And like I remember, like standing there being like. <laughs> oh, because it was like, and he was like, well, we're going to get married. And I was like, that was like a cool, like we just like broke up and we walked down the aisle and that was it. At least he didn't say we've got a truck full of beer. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we had that it was, too. It was pretty lucrative the way that I was like, Mitch, like you have to have my back here. But yeah. Well, I do love that theme, us just being who we are. And it, it's that showing up instead of showing off that you seem to have at the heart of your TikTok and your social media presence, yeah. both Instagram and TikTok from scrolling you. Can I say that? Happy. Yes. Is that a good way yep. to put it? I've been yep. scrolling you. I've been creeping you, yes. whatever. Yeah. So what do you think is the secret to your success? Um, we had a direction pretty quickly. Like I had, because I had lost my job, um, I was trying to refocus everything and do things with more of a purpose. So when I, we woke up with the, the 56,000 followers, 
I remember jokingly saying to him, like, this could this could be something like this could be my chance to give myself a platform. And and he's very goal oriented. So we were like sitting there being like, okay, so what do we want to focus on? Like they obviously the first step in achieving anything is to kind of figure out your direction and where you're going to go. And we just kind of sat there and I I was like, I want it to be funny because that's what our relationship is based off of. I want it to be us and who we are and unapologetically the two of us. Um, I want it to be about, you know, making women feel confident um, in who they are, no matter what part of their journey they're on. Um, And I want it to be authentic. And I think that that's the word that's kind of stuck over the last year is just making sure that anytime we post something between the two of us or anytime that I'm posting my thoughts, that it is as authentic as it possibly can be. Scott, you say you're nervous of the spotlight. Yeah. <laughs> so did it, you know, how did you get used to that? Because I'm still she's used so to comfortable. <laughs> I know she is very, um, I'm still getting used to it. For the longest time, I just tried to stay away from it, to be honest with you. She'd be like, get in this, and I'd just hide. <laughs> I didn't want to be in any of them, but it still blows my mind. Like, the first time we were at the grocery store and someone freaked out and was like, you're on TikTok. And I was like, what is going on right now? <laughs> I don't even have the app. I didn't even know what it was. He doesn't. He still doesn't have the app. Oh, no. That's funny. So he doesn't even have any of that. So it just kind of, it, it just kind of spiraled. And then now, now it's a... I think it's a lot easier for him in my, like from my point of view is that I capture him being authentic. Like he can't lip sync for the the life. And I definitely can't act. So So, if if you think they're fake, they're definitely not fake. Because I can't, he doesn't do those things, which I think bodes well for our platform because he is truly authentic. Um, And I try to catch him during those funny moments in our relationship. And then it's, then I've already got it. So he can't really say no. Yeah, she's pretty much always filming everything at this point. (laughs) Because if I do something funny, I'm like, I'm not doing it again. Good yeah. luck. Yeah. What are the best messages you've received? Oh. The messages are why I do it. That's that's the whole point of this is that if I can make somebody realize their worth before I did or after I did. And I, I uh, it took me 30 years to really be in my body and like who I was and allow the focus to be on my personality and not my size that my goal is to have 13 year olds to have you know 54 year olds see me and if they don't see things the same way that they kind of reflect on that and change how they they, you know their inner dialogue the way they speak to themselves and the way they they view other people um so a lot of the messages are so simple like women trying on new clothing for the first time or shooting their shot with a man who they thought was out of their league simply because of their size. That's kind of cool for us because we, we are not, we didn't meet later. I did. We didn't meet when I was plus size and he was, you know, physically fit. We met when we were kids. So that's a different dynamic, but at the same time, our relationship has nothing to do with our physical, our physical bodies. It has everything to do with being best friends and the humor in our relationship. So I've had, um, I've had women message me and be like, just so you know, like, um, you know, I, I met a guy last night and we've been talking now for two weeks and you, uh, you got me laid. And (laughs) as funny as that is, it's like such an empowering thing for me because it's like, you, you, they didn't have the confidence before to go out, to step out and to have those conversations with, with the, the, you know, their part, people who they could view as their partners. And then they're coming back to me to, and feeling confident enough to be like, Oh, by the way, like, and that's really cool. And over the week, this week, Monday morning, a friend of mine messaged me and she's a guidance counselor. And, uh, she was like, we were at, um, uh, junior high and I walked in to do a project a body positivity project and there are kids doing Lizzo and people doing Ashley Graham. And she was like, and then I'm sitting there and all of a sudden this girl gets up and this, the project is about you. And she's like, she's done this entire project 
on who you are and your videos and all of your body positivity. So I'm sitting in bed. I'm crawling. He's at work. I'm by myself. I have a video on my phone of me being like, somebody did a project on me. Just cry. And that's cool to me. Like, I remember where I was when I was 14 years old and 15 years old. And to think about the fact that... <sighs> Sorry. A 15 year old sees me and thinks better of themselves. That's important. That's why I love having a platform. That's why, you know, I just know that that 15 year old choosing to do the, her project on me is going to not only make a difference in her life, but it's also going to make a difference in the lives of her peers. And if by the time she's 30, she's lived a better, more freeing, more confident life because I existed and I chose to have a platform. That's really cool. <laughs> okay. It wasn't in my contract. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> <scared. laughs> Wait one sec. You know, this is, it's just touching my heart so much because I, I see visually this magic happening where your impact is so connected to this purpose, this deeply felt purpose. And, and you, you're obviously hitting some kind of sweet spot with people. And that's so beautiful because I, I have a window into this teenage world where, you know, these teenage girls, especially their light they just dim it and dim it and dim it. And then they forget they have any light. And then they want to put out anybody else's light if that they see sometimes. Well, and it's like, it, have you ever met a five-year-old? Because they think they are God's gift to this planet. <laughs> they think they are the best things that have ever happened to this world. And at some point along the way, between the age of five to 15, they're seeing things or meeting people or... Um, you know, walking into stores and not being able to fit into clothing or, you know, being a part of things that are making them feel like they're not worthy because of their body or the way they look or the things that they're going through. And that's that's what the world is doing. Like it's, you know, I, again, you go back to a, a five-year-old, they think they're the best things in the world. So what happens between five and 15? What I love is the way you deal with the negative feedback on air or on online. So tell me about that. Well, like I, I'm 31. There's pretty much nothing you can say to me that I haven't already said to myself. And I think that's really important to realize, like you think you're being mean to me on the internet. I've been meaner to myself. Like, you know, especially as a plus size woman, like anything you're saying to me, I've thought about. So it's, you're not getting anywhere with me. And I'm at a point in my life where I can take it for what it is there are people who don't take it for what it is. And that's important to me. So I'm 31. I'm too old to be bullied. So it's, I like to kind of put my foot down and say like, this isn't okay. You don't get to say this to people. This is what you could be doing to somebody. Um, and you need to understand that and whether or not that's impactful for every person that I say it to, who knows, but I know that there are people who have come back and been like, you're right. Like this is, this is on me. And I, you know, I need to view this differently. Oh, one of the things I love about you two so much is your sense of optimism and positivity in so many different arenas. And I think about how so many people walk through life carrying resentments and regrets. Do you have any regrets? No. You have zero regrets? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Uh, no, no regrets. I don't have, really have any. I think that the cool part about our relationship is that we've done everything uniquely, uniquely us. And it's hard to regret something that is you. So, you know, we're not traditional. The things that we've, you know, the way that our relationship has gone about is not the majority. It's very different from the things that, you know, other people experience. Um, and yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't regret, I regret not quitting my job sooner. <laughs> I regret not, like, things like that now that I'm in the position that I'm in, to be like, I'm, I regret not focusing on my, 
you know, my creative side sooner. I regret not, but that's all for myself. Like I regret not figuring out who I was sooner. I regret those types of things, but I don't regret anything when it comes to who we are and where we're at. What about you, Scott? Do you have any regrets? Um, just one. I regret not doing a real proposal. Stop it. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> Are you proposing right now? Yeah. <laughs> Is that why your vibe's been off? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Do I have to say yes? Yeah. Well, you don't Is have to. Is <laughs> that what I'm supposed to do? Yes. Oh my god. <sighs> Oh my gosh. I literally for the last week have been telling him that his vibe has been off. <laughs> it was just so funny because I literally was like, um, you don't like you don't seem yourself. Like you don't I, he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I don't know what it is. You just your vibe is off. Like our vibe is off. So this makes sense. Oh my gosh. He told us that he never lies to you and he said I'm gonna have a hard time. I can't. <sighs> I he, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you just cut down on one knee. Oh my god. You can't say I didn't do it anymore now. <laughs> so now you see why we're filming this in the oh. store of our, our sponsor of the Canadian Love Map. Charm Diamonds has been behind us from the beginning and this was their idea. Oh my god. <laughs> so oh. what do you think of the ring? I think I think I've spent 14 years telling him exactly what I wanted, so he did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's beautiful! Now everything that I do is gonna be done, <laughs> is gonna be done with my left hand. Thank you, Charm. This is literally incredible. This is so amazing, Scott. Well, you feel better? Oh yeah, that was <laughs> huge. I was so stressed this whole week. It's good to know he doesn't lie well. No. <laughs> no, he doesn't lie well at all. She would have been able to tell right away. Did you have this? No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> There's good. no way I could have brought that home. <laughs> I also can't hide anything from her, so. God. All right, that's a wrap, you guys. Thank you oh so much God. for sharing your story. And thank you for listening. It's been an absolute joy to be part of this episode and to have been able to surprise a woman who's always giving so much to others. Check out the video of our little surprise by visiting charmdiamonds.com. I promise it'll be worth your time. Or follow Alicia McCarvel on TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. Thanks again for tuning into the Canadian Love Map. If you love what you're hearing, please follow, rate, and share. This podcast is hosted by me, Nancy Regan, produced by Podstarter, and made possible by Charm Diamond Centers. 